This is maybe not the best idea. Can do it. So, 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 so. Ta da! Hi there, my name's Josh. I'm normally a tech guy into Unreal, VR, AI, and I was even briefly in an Apple keynote. But today I'm going to talk about a new project I've got. I've long wanted to do up a car. I used to maybe repair my cars a little bit when I was younger. Nothing too serious, so I'm a real amateur at this. I have an EV and I've been hankering to make an EV out of some kind of car that I loved from my childhood. So when I was young, I used to love Japanese cars, particularly Hondas, Nissans as well. I used to love German cars, particularly BMWs, and then obviously the best German make of all, Porsche. Now, fortunately, Porsches are a little bit expensive for a project to be working on, particularly when I might just mess it up. So I started looking at maybe the cheaper end of Porsches or what I thought was the cheaper end of Porsches, which is like Porsche 944s, stuff like that. Turns out in recent years, they've gone up in money like a crazy amount as well. I tried bidding for a write-off 944 S2 at auction. I gave up at like three, three and a half thousand pounds. It went for like five. It was written off. I had another idea, which is to look for breakers uh, of 944s. There's a few around. And I contacted a guy and said, look, you know, I don't need an engine. I don't need a gearbox. May have been a mistake. I don't even want an interior because I kind of want to put my own stamp on that. Have you got anything? And he said, actually, it's made of a few different cars, but the main parts of it all from a 944 S2. And it's here. And you can have it for 1500 pounds. Here it is, probably the ugliest barn find, Porsche 944 S2 around. Go and look at it. How do you open the bonnet? So your head in a footwell and look for a lever on the side. So it turns out you, uh, you don't open the bonnet from the driver's side. Must be a, you know, a thing that they didn't change from going from left hand drive to right hand drive. You open it from the passenger side, which is bizarre. I've never seen that in a car before, but maybe it was more typical back then. So let's pop the bonnet. <gasps> Moment of truth. Oh, thing of beauty. Look at that. Gubbins down here for the pop-up lights, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, you could give them a push. I don't know how. Yeah, I don't want to break anything because we've got like the, the motor. Yeah, still attached down here. Uh, random pipes and bits just lying around in here. Maybe some of them will come in useful. But this would have been a three litre four cylinder, the largest four cylinder engine in the world at the time this car was made. I think some fiddling has been done to the suspension in this one. But interestingly, apart from some superficial rust, it doesn't look too bad in here. I cannot believe how filthy this is and we haven't even gone into the boot and got stuff out. Inside, I don't think I've ever seen a more ratty looking car. We've got a little bit of interior in here. We've got some suspension components over the other side i think i can see a brake disc as well so maybe a hub i believe there's parts here for the sill looks like there's maybe part of it's not a dash so it's probably across the rear got a bit of carpet we've got a steering wheel we've got a cracked dashboard but we'll be able to see much better once you can actually see in the car because you can't at the moment because it's so dirty we've got the stripy rear seats here and if i was going to go for restoring this to like original spec these are definitely the spec I would go for. But I'm thinking because we're going to need room for batteries, probably we're going to be saying goodbye to these back seats at some point. This is a really massive and heavy piece of glass that I'm really nervous about damaging. It looks like it would be problematic to get another. So the struts don't work on it, so it doesn't hold itself up. This might be one of the first parts we remove once the thing is clean, but you can see how absolutely filthy this thing is. Here at the back, there's normally actually a lower balance below this bumper. That's the bit that has already been sold. But then I don't really love this back bumper view anyway. The 968 that came after the 944 S2 had a better bumper arrangement. And I'm thinking maybe we want to try and replicate something similar to that. I think the logo on the Porsche 944 S2 is completely nuts. 
like this two kind of doesn't seem to fit it feels like they should have moved the whole thing along a bit and um, i'm not sure we're going to be keeping it exactly like that we have an extra rear light here if we want to keep the original style lights the actual one on the car on this side is smashed so it's very nice that the seller put another one in here but as you can see it is an absolute state and we need to get all of this out of the car so we can work out what we've got and then how we move forward as you can see it's uh riding pretty high at the moment because there's so little weight in it but also these uh horrible tiny wheels and pretty trash tires we will at some point have to think about the wheel situation there is definitely a lot to be done here luckily the doors are in an all right state but we've also got some misalignment between this front wing on this side it looks like someone actually started the sill work they've taken off the outer panel and we can see the actual sills of the car and everything so yeah we've got to see what state it is on this side uh there's a lot to work out on the other side obviously this is not a big enough space really to be doing what we're doing but maybe once we're up on the uh, trolley jack we may be able to shifty some stuff around and make a bit of room for at least the early part of this and then we'll try and find a proper space to be working on it obviously this car is pretty ratty i mean it stinks to be honest and that's probably like animal urine of some kind there's probably some nests in here yet to find it's past the idea of let's just restore it um i don't really want to do that and it wasn't destined for that anyway it was a parts car it was being broken so i'm happy to save it from that it's got clean title which is cool as well but I want to make it so it has a full new life, not just some kind of complete garage queen, but something that can be used, something that's exciting, something that people can look inside of and think, wow, probably very much my generation, people in their 40s that will look back at this. It's called Pop Up Headlights, which is like the coolest thing ever for my generation. So I want to make the most of those. It's not a bad thing that it's not being restored to me. It's a good thing that it'll be kept on the road and be a cool car. And maybe when my kids grow up, and as I've only just had them, that's going to be some time. It could be a car that they think, Dad was nuts. What the hell did he do this for? So what's next for the project? Well, it needs to be cleaned. That thing is toxic. It's covered in rat and pigeon poo. It's been in that barn. Probably not safe to really work around it. So I need to clean it. Be interesting to see what it looks like afterwards. How many different cars it's made up of. I'd like to weigh it. I'd like to see how much this thing weighs without its engine and gearbox and interior. It's probably pretty light, the lightest it's going to be at this point. I would like to take out all that stuff that's inside it and see what we've got. Maybe we've got everything we need to repair the sills. Maybe we've got some suspension components. Don't really know. I'd like to strip the paint off it. Maybe try something like soda blasting. I don't know if that would be aggressive enough. But then how do I seal it after I've done that so it doesn't get rusty again? Need to learn that. Maybe someone could tell me down in the comments. I need to find someone that can teach me to weld. Maybe they can do some of the more structural stuff so I don't mess it up. But I really want to learn because there's going to be plenty of work to do on this car. There's tons to do, and that's before we even get to interiors, electric motors, anything to do with the drivetrain, really. We're going to keep a tally on how much I spend in this entire project. I could try and keep a tally of how many hours I spend on it as well. Tools that I buy because I have none. Um, so it's going to be a bit of a crazy project. So if you want to watch along and see how much I mess this up, if you've got any questions or even some answers for me, please write them down in the comments. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.